If nothing else, the Sims 4 community usually has some pretty strong opinions, from pack rankings to gameplay ideas, and it's not hard to see some ideas you probably won't agree with. But today, I'm reacting to some rather unpopular opinions, but not the common ones you usually see people arguing about, such as open or closed world, babies or cars. Hang tight, because chances are we're going to have some disagreements. So before I get into the comments, I will say these are just my opinions and my opinions alone, and if you you do disagree with me or anyone else, please do not attack each other in the comments. This is just for fun. So we're going to go start with some hot takes in the Sims community, and then I'm going to respond to each one and give you my honest opinion. My unpopular opinion, you cannot satisfy Simmers, and that's okay. If they release nine packs in a year, we whine. If they release three packs in a year and some kits here and there, we whine. When they try to satisfy everyone and do what we ask for, suddenly we don't want that. Now, I actually do mostly agree with this opinion for a few reasons. Number one, there are tons of people in the community and that only exploded after they made the base game free to play. So for better or for worse, there's always going to be different opinions. I also agree that we often complain that there are too many packs and they're being rushed out or we say that there is a dry spell. So in the end, I think the Sims team can only do what they think is best for their game. They definitely should listen to constructive critique, but are they always going to please people or even and often please people? Probably not. This one though is a little bit more of a hot take. Hi Erin, my tweet is let's plays give the impression that the game is worse than it is because they focus on one pack at a time, forgetting to integrate many great things from prior packs. I've enjoyed the game much more since cutting back on the content I watch. Now disclaimer here, I am opinionated on this because number one, I watch a lot of let's plays, or at least I used to, and number two, of course, I am a content creator. I actually completely disagree with this, but I do understand that this could be an individual thing. First of all, I know that there are tons of Let's Plays that use more than one pack at a time, and in fact, a lot of them do. However, I also understand when a new pack releases, such as Growing Together, etc., they are going to especially highlight that pack. Now, ideally, they would highlight how it works with other packs, but I do understand focusing on said pack. So yes, I understand from a perspective of saying, oh, they're just focusing on that pack and not showing fully what the game can do, but I actually think if anything, Let's Plays inspire me more to play Sims 4. This is low-key shade, but I still think it's true. I think there's plenty of gameplay in The Sims if you're creative. I always think of dozens of storylines to try, and it never fails to be fun. Also, look at people like James Turner and Dr. Gluon. They are so creative with The Sims. So I kind of agree with this, and I kind of disagree with this. So in terms of gameplay, I do hear a lot of times that people say they're simply not enough gameplay in Sims 4. I don't think personally that's the problem for me with Sims 4. I think there is a lot of gameplay, especially if you fully explore packs. And yes, Dr. Gluon is hilarious if you've never seen their content, and it really shows that you can be really creative. I think if you are a storyteller or builder, or you really like dabbling in casts, there are ways to always have fun, including with challenges. However, for me at least, gameplay isn't the core issue with Sims 4. It's more about how things are programmed. It's more about the Sims 4 his personality, the world, how the worlds work, how townies react. So I feel like for me, it's the lacking AI, which I do think they have worked on and improved somewhat, but I think those are the bigger problems rather than things to do. Now we're going to get into something that I personally don't have very strong opinions about, and this is from Plumbella, saying that they don't think houses should be furnished when you buy them, fixed items only, such as shower, toilet, and counters. Honestly, you can let me know in the comments below what you you think about this take because I would be fine with this. I would be fine with it either way. I understand how this gives you a challenge and I also understand why it's a little bit more realistic. Chrissy agrees with Plumbella adding they'd like if they had the option to get it fully furnished with stuff like beds, couches, fridge, etc. but then have the unfurnished option have only the plumbing, counters, and stove rather than it being completely empty. But something I do have an opinion about is Sims 4 Worlds. Now, Growing Together got a lot of pushback about the world. I made a whole video about that. But this person says they don't think we need any more worlds for Sims 4. They are so many, and yet they all feel so hollow. I know this will quite literally never happen, but I actually wish the Sims team would focus on making the worlds we have feel more like worlds and less like a bunch of lots. Now, I don't know exactly what that would mean for them, if they mean the way they operate. I know a lot of people 
people would love semi-open worlds. I personally think, yes, that is never going to happen in Sims 4's programming. And unfortunately, I do think that the size of the world and also more importantly, the shells will continue. Now, I will argue that some worlds feel a little bit more lively than others. We can do that in a different video if you are interested. But I feel like here, I'm kind of torn. So on one hand, I think there are packs that simply don't need worlds. I would argue that growing together might have been even better without a world. And I did discuss why in a previous video. On the other hand, there's some pretty cool world ideas and that 2020 survey. And I know some people are longing for some non-US and UK based worlds. Now, obviously, they can't do a non-US and UK based world for every single pack. And I don't think there's going to be great worlds for every single pack. But honestly, because there are a lot of things they could still tap into, I think that the majority of the people, safe to say, might want more worlds. And I would like to see more worlds as well. Now, while a lot of people do want worlds, I know that a lot of people do not like the welcome wagon in Sims 4. Moving into a new house should be more than just a boring welcome wagon and Vlad knocking at your door. It's one of the most stressful things and often even freeing events in your life. And a more nomadic lifestyle would be cool to go with this. In addition, they could have things such as parties with guests to host, moodless sentiments, and pre-planning for moving in live mode, and of course saying bye to friends and family. Now, I could see this both ways. I think this could be nice to make moving in a bigger of event, and I do think that moving in it could be pivotal for some people's lives. However, I know some people move sims in and out like it's no one's business, so I think that if they did something like this, it should be completely optional. As for the welcome wagon, I admit I ignore it nine times out of ten. Let me know in the comments below if you pay attention to the welcome wagon or if you're antisocial like me. So this person says that Bust the Dust is the best and only kit that deserves any praise. It has gameplay and it adds a lot to the game. It only received a bad reception and release because almost like always with The Sims 4, it was designed badly and probably untested. So I'm going to push back. I don't think it was untested. I don't think that any Sims 4 packs are fully untested. Will I say that some packs are not tested enough or rather they are not fixed enough? Yes, I would say that. Now, this pack was very unfortunate because it was the gameplay kit and obviously we have not gotten any gameplay kits since. I think that, you know, since kits are going to stay, it would be nice to see gameplay kits if they were more properly designed. So on that end, it would be nice because I feel like the game often leans very build by and cast heavy and I know a lot of people would appreciate some bite-sized gameplay. On the other hand, I have to say the kits that don't include gameplay tend to not add very many big problems and I do see why they are easier to produce. Now, I'm not someone who gets terribly excited about build or cast assets, so I have a gameplay bias. I don't know. I would like to see gameplay kits return, but only if they return in a good way. Now, I am one of those people that does like Sims 4 seasons. I like seasons in all the Sims games I've played, but obviously this is always a controversy with some people loving it and other people saying it's not really that great. I don't really like the Sims 4 version of seasons. The lack of deep snow and missing hail and rain effects just make it immersion breaking. And I just think the weather effects really aren't that good. Sims 3 Seasons still wins hands down. So for me, I think that Sims 4 Seasons is actually a pretty solid pack, especially within the Sims 4 universe. I understand that the lack of snow depth does bother people. It doesn't actually personally bother me that much, but I definitely can see that point of view. I think that there's a lot more to the pack than just the deep snow, however. As far as what Seasons expansion I like the most, I'm going to be biased towards the third Sims game just because it's my favorite, but I also have some really good memories of Sims 2 seasons as well. However, I think that has more to do with how it interacts with the base game and the base game as a whole versus the packs itself. For Sims 4, sure, I could argue for more being added to seasons, but I actually still think it's a pretty good pack. This person takes issues with the holidays in season. It isn't the best app, and the holidays can actually be annoying when I'm doing something in gameplay and I'm interrupted by a holiday. I can't imagine them shipping out an expansion pack with seasons without holidays, which I do want to add. I know that there's a lot of debate about if seasons should be a pack at all. Now, in the past, I always defended it, but I could see basic weather and seasonal effects should be base game, whereas I could see them doing a holidays expansion pack. So personally, that's what I'd like to see for a future Sims game, but I will get into that in a different video. But while seasons is mostly pretty well loved, there is a pack that is highly controversial in Sims 4, and that is Journey to Bat 2. Journey to Bat 2 is a decent pack that only gets given negative 
of attention because people want to hate it, even though its purpose is to bring something new to the game, and it's also actually one of the least buggiest packs. Sure, the gameplay isn't groundbreaking, but it works as intended. Now, I actually mostly agree with this, and you probably are going to attack me in the comments for this. So, am I really interested in Bat 2? Not whatsoever. However, I have to say, it at least kind of fulfills its promise, unlike some other packs, which we're going to get into in a minute, and I feel like Bat 2 just could have been done better, probably not quite as bad as people make it out to be. I personally don't think it was made at all for the main Sims 4 audience in mind, but rather to bring in new players. I still think it would have been better as a spin-off game, but I don't think it's actually the worst pack for Sims 4. Because sadly, the worst pack I think for Sims 4 is My Wedding Stories, but this person disagrees with me. Even though My Wedding Stories is a very buggy pack, I liked the different interactions you can do during the weddings and some of the features added. Like, a good concept was there. Okay, I am very biased against this pack, you all know this, I was really hopeful for my wedding stories, I thought it was going to be right up my alley, but not only do I find it buggy, even after the fixes, but more importantly, I feel like it just isn't that great of a pack in terms of gameplay. I feel like it all focuses on micromanagement, and I was hoping you would add dimension and depth and meaning to your weddings, but instead it feels like it's just a list of interactions you can click on and sometimes they work and sometimes they won't. In short, My Wedding Stories is probably my least favorite pack for Sims 4 yet. Another pack I see that gets a lot of backlash surprisingly but sold very well is Cats and Dogs. This person says that cats and dogs are pretty bad. They mostly either get sick or run away. In Sims 3, they have wishes, skills, and rewards. Also, did you see the way they die? It's so caring and loving, unlike Sims 4. I will say I don't think Cats and Dogs is the strongest pack for Sims for, I don't think it's terrible. I would rate it as fairly mediocre. I feel like I'm glad that we have it as an addition, but I do agree that the cats and the dogs could have been done a little bit better. I feel like they don't have tons of personality, which seems to be a running theme in Sims 4, and I do agree that in past games, there was a little bit more nuance to the pets. Now, another pack that gets backlash, but originally was seemingly popular, is High School Years. I really like High School Years. I haven't really seen anyone talk about it in a positive light, and I can see its flaws, but I love it. I go to school with The Sims daily, and it adds so much to teens and their lives. At the risk of sounding boring, I'm kind of in between on this pack. I feel like high school years is not any worse or better than I expected, and I'm going to get into that in a minute because it ties into our next unpopular opinion. I was so excited for the university pack, but in my humble unpopular opinion, it kind of sucks. I find that if my Sims take a full load, there's literally no time to do anything. College is hard, but it wasn't just go, go, go all the time like this. I also regret buying University. The cast is cute and all, but like the build buy could have been better, and I don't like the gameplay. It takes the entirety of one's young adult lifespan to finish college. So here's my hot take on both high school years and University, and yes, I am lumping them together. I personally am never interested in active schooling in Sims 4, and so that's why University packs and high school years just don't personally appeal to me. While I do understand why people want to see their sims go into classes, etc., I personally think that it just doesn't add that much dimension to the game. Now, I do think University was an important pack to add, and I think it was a very popular request. On the other hand, I just feel like these packs often feel very repetitive, and I have to say this is not a Sims 4 specific thing. I feel like in general across the Sims franchise, University, and now High School Years, yes, they add a little bit, they might be fun to play for once, but I personally don't find myself going and playing them. Of the two, I do think University University was executed a little bit better, and I do know that in both packs, the cast in Bill Bai is fairly well used. I will say for high school years, it's nice that they added some other gameplay, but I just feel like it didn't feel very cohesive, and it just didn't give quite enough dimension for me to absolutely love the pack. So I don't think Discovery University or high school years are terrible packs, but I definitely wouldn't say that they are the strongest packs either. One pack I hardly see people talk about is Strangerville, though. Strangerville is way better than most people people give it credit for, it adds way more gameplay than other packs, and even if you don't replay the story, the several hours will make it worth it. Now, I feel like Strangerville, I've talked about this on my channel, I can link the video below if you are interested. I don't personally feel like story packs are my personal favorite for a sandbox game, but I do think it's good to have that option for people who enjoy them, and I also feel like what I like about Strangerville is that it adds a little bit of interest to the game. I feel like Sims 4 plays it very safe with gameplay, and Strangerville 
at very least, they were taking a risk. I also think the world is decent minus the builds, and I also think that overall it is a cohesive theme. Is it my favorite Sims 4 pack? Absolutely not. But do I appreciate that they took a risk and did something a little bit different? Yes, I actually do. One thing though I admittedly have never used is scenarios. Allison says that she likes scenarios and uses them a lot. Her only complaint is that there aren't really pack specific ones. I understand why they may choose to do that, but it's very limiting for a feature that has so many possibilities. Scenarios I'm pretty neutral about. I can see why some people like them and they are especially helpful for people first getting into the game. Oddly, I don't remember the last time we got a scenario, let me know in the comments below, but I do feel like they could do a little bit more with them. I feel like some seem more interesting than others and I do appreciate variety, so hopefully if they do continue to do scenarios, they will be a little bit more creative with them. However, while I'm neutral about scenarios, this one I am less neutral about. I love micromanagement. I'm a control freak and also a perfectionist. Now look, there is nothing wrong with liking micromanagement whatsoever, and the fact is people play The Sims differently, and that's just how it is. Now, do I like micromanagement in my Sims game? Absolutely not. In fact, if you heard my critique of my wedding stories, that was one of my number one critiques. I think it's good that there are options for micromanagement, but that's how I see autonomy off being used for. My preference is that there are more things that happen outside of your control and there is a mode if you don't want that. That way different types of gameplay can both be satisfied. And speaking of different types of gameplay, let's talk about supernaturals. I like occults but I don't need fairies. Most likely they would be too similar to spellcasters. I personally don't really care about fairies, I actually do like supernaturals, but I do agree there is a risk they will be too similar to spellcasters. However, there are probably ways they can distinguish fairies, and the reason I'm advocating for them is purely because I feel like a lot of people really want them. But I would be interested in seeing other supernaturals as well, I think there's mythical creatures they could do, and rounding up on this hot take, and that is about mods in CC. I have to agree with some people relying too much on mods in CC. Now, if I could of course use them as well for a better experience, but as a console player I must say, The Sims 4 has so much to offer I can't understand people saying it's boring or nothing without the mods. I kind of agree here, so on one hand I feel like it's kind of dismissive to tell other people that it's crazy to play The Sims 4 without mods or CC. Number one, a lot of people can't, and number two, some people just simply don't, like me. Mods and CC are used to enhance your game, and obviously there's nothing wrong with enjoying them as long as you keep them updated. On the other hand, I think we need to respect that some people get just enough enjoyment without them as well. I do think it's personally possible to enjoy Sims 4 or other Sims games without mods or CC, but I also think that is a highly individual thing. So those are just a few of the unpopular opinions I collected. I hope this was a little bit more unique, just refreshing, and just kind of a lighthearted video. Of course, these are just my opinion, so please don't take any offense. If there is anything you would like to hear in more detail, because I just responded pretty briefly to each one, definitely let me know in the comments below. If you have any video requests, also let me know that. And finally, if you made it this far, thanks so much for listening. Please give it a like and share if you did enjoy it. Take care, and as always, I will see you in the next one.